Hey, hey, you're out in the garage with Easy Jeezy. How's it going, guys? Uh, today we're working on brakes. MP brakes. MP disc brakes. The MP Wide 5 disc brakes. Now, ever since I put these things on, I've had a problem with brake squeal. It's not always there. It seems like if you start off cold, about the first three or four stops you get, there was nothing. And then the, the more you used it, the, the more they'd heat up. And I would put come out here and touch the uh, rotors. And you can see the rotors don't really look like they're chewed up. But there was something going on. And I, I must have had these calipers off. <laughs> countless times over the past six years that I've had these and every time I took them off and messed with them I would sand them I would do different things try to scuff them up try to try to deal with the harmonics I'd jam pieces of wood and and rubber and just all kinds of crazy things uh, I changed the master cylinder I thought there was something to matter with that I used to have turning brakes in this car and I took those out and and eliminated that and it's just it always came back sometimes it'd take a while but that in-town traffic it was just so annoying and it was this wheel okay so this is this is the setup for the front and Here's the setup on the back. Um, now these are the ones with the e-brake. And I even had custom stainless steel brake lines made to go all the way up to the, uh, the T-block that goes over to the other side. I disconnected my emergency brakes. That was the other problem. I really couldn't tell whether it was coming from the front or the back. And this rotor got hot as well so it is I my brother he's an engineer he told me that he'd had problems with a car and the mechanic told him he's got to replace the pads and may, possibly the rotor because it got so hot that it crystallized and and changed the compound of the pad material and I thought to myself this is such a light car as a matter of fact this is so over braked with this setup and the only reason why I had it is because I lost the splines in one of my brake drums and there was nothing available and I didn't have any used stuff that was any good and I thought well I'm just gonna go ahead and get the backs and they work pretty darn good let me tell you I, I I can't remember six years ago, but uh, eventually I decided, well, let's just do a match. I must have been happy with the back, or I wouldn't have bought the front, because I didn't buy all four of them at the same time. I gotta, it's hard to remember, but this squealing thing really got to me. Now, here's, uh, by the way, I hope it's solved. The dog and I have been driving around for the last two days in town um, going on errands and just cruising around slow and I haven't I haven't heard a peep out of them so there might be something to it now here are the front pads and here's some examples of some things I did in an effort to stop that brake squeal which as we all know is vibration it's harmonics just like a guitar string or a clarinet or something of that nature I bought this disc brake quiet. It's a great product. I put it on the I put it on the backs. I put it on the piston. I put it uh, where the connection points were, and it always seemed to work for about three or four days, and then it would just gradually come back and be worse and worse and worse. I kept hoping that I would find something, a problem, and the one that kind of stood out was the one in the right front wheel. I spilled some brake fluid on it here just a minute ago cleaning some things up. Um, you can see these little cracks. See the little oddball ones like this one here by my thumb. There was a few of those in there and it's like that was the only pad that had it. And apparently my squeak was on the right front of the car. So I bought the new pads and I took them out of the package and 
I started to put them on and they didn't want to fit very well. I started cutting they're on the car so I can't really show it to you by holding in my hand. So I started cutting the and grinding this corner off to make room for it. And I'm looking at witness marks here telling me that I did that at some point over those six years. And so when I get the new pads, I took them out of the package and lo and behold, I grabbed one that looked just like this. These were both on the right front. And these were both on the left front. And you can see I even made more hacksaw marks and I removed material to taper it so there wouldn't be any sharp edges. Nothing I did worked. Then I picked up another one of those new shoes and it dropped right in. And I thought, uh-oh, what's going on here? And this is what I noticed. See the corner of these two pads? How it's tapered off where I said I was grinding? That's because these are the inners and these are the outers. And I, had, I did not notice that. I don't remember reading anything in the instructions about it. I've watched YouTube videos um, by MP for their disc brake in uh, install. I've seen them roll the calipers up and show how easy it is. Never once did I hear any mention of this particular thing. So I'm making this video in case you've got a squeal problem or brake problem that you can't seem to discover. So what I should have done and what I ended up doing is I used this on the other side and then one like this on the outside. So this would have been the left front wheel and this one would have gone like this for the right front wheel. And that little tapered part has got to go on the inner side of that caliper. Now as long as we're talking about brakes, I want to show you something new that I discovered. Here's the uh, uh, the replacement pads are by Impy, and I'll just do a close-up on this. You can pause it and and read the part numbers if that's what you need to do. This is some replacement pads for the back. Now I bought these, and I thought I thought it, the back brakes were the ones squealing because it was hotter to the touch. And I, I took these out of the package and they were too thick. They wouldn't go in there. It says MP right on them, but these things were too thick. This is their attempt to stop vibration on the rears. It's kind of a simple setup. And now, as I was going through getting all this brake stuff out, I found this box. I, I think I got this from a friend of mine. It says Nakata on it. And on the cover it says Ford Taurus. So I thought, what are these? <laughs> and I looked at them and it's like, oh my gosh, is that a dead ringer or what? That, that looks thicker right here, but there's a little black paint on that. Look at that, Nakata. So you know, must be a town in China called Nakata. <laughs> so, at any rate, they look like the same thing to me. So, it's possible for your rear brakes that you could uh, maybe go to a auto parts store and and ask for uh, brake shoes for a for a Ford Taurus. And that number, there's the numbers right there. So. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but okay. Now, as long as we're making this video, um, there's a few things that will help you if you're new to this. Um, if you go to disc brakes, they recommend that you go with a disc brake master cylinder. This is an old bus master cylinder, an early bus master cylinder. We call that a single stage because all of your brakes connect and if any one of the four brake lines 
become damaged and you lose fluid, it affects the whole system, makes it go down. The, the newer versions were two-stage brake systems, like this. So there was, it was isolated from the front to the rear, and you also had separate hoses going up to your brake reservoir, and then you would top that off, and this was designed with a little divider in it, so you couldn't lose all of it all of the time. I hope that makes sense. Um, so you'd either have front brakes or rear brakes. It didn't go left or right. Now, I didn't, I, I saw these parts that I took out in here, and I have all this stuff loose. According to MP, if you decide that you do want to use this for disc brakes, there's a residual valve right in the end, and I can see it down there inside the hole. What that does is it's kind of like a check valve. So if you are in traffic, these are little pistons and seals. There was something, I think, that went on the end. And you got this long spring in there, and this is part of that residual valve. It must be broken in pieces somewhere. Here's a newer one. Oh, this one, this, oh, that's where all the stuff came from. <laughs> Duh. So, at any rate, there's a little residual valve on the end that, that keeps a little bit of pressure on the brakes. And they did that on drum brakes because they get out of adjustment. One of the advantages to using disc brakes is they don't get out of adjustment. You'll never have to adjust them again. You'll just have to listen to them squeal until you figure out what the problem is. Um, you want to bench bleed your master cylinder before you put it in. Otherwise, just pushing it back and forth, you'll be pushing air out and you'll be sucking that air right back in. So you want to like pre-charge it. And I did that. I made up these little hoses, little short hoses. And I just put them into the side of uh, my master cylinder, like so. And my, I'll, we'll go over to the car and I'll show you. My two-stage disc brake master cylinder has this style of reservoir. You pull these out, you can twist these out, and put these put the other setup in. I think I reused the rubber part that was in there. That's the thing about brake fluid. It doesn't uh, deteriorate rubber, but don't get it on your paint. And you should use probably DOT 3 and be consistent. And they say don't use, reuse your brake fluid. In an emergency you might have to, but I'm just just kind of passing on some safety things because this is all about brakes. Uh, now, the other thing is, if you're going to have to probably custom make some brake lines if you have a car like this. So, the last thing I want to touch base on is there's metric brakes and there are SAE American brakes. This is the metric brake. And when you're using these, um, now this would go probably, I'm thinking, on a wheel. They have a little bit longer, more threads. Make sure that your threads don't bottom out and that this isn't, you got things kind of in a bind, so it might feel that it's snug and you keep trying to, if there's no threads showing, chances are you haven't put pressure in the right spot. And the American version, these are all the metric bubble top. What's this? Okay, now this is the flare type, inverted flare that the uh, American, now look at this one is inverted flare on this side. I must have done that and it probably came bubble top because I don't have the tool to make that bubble fitting. And brake lines are relatively inexpensive. Something like this would probably be, I don't know, five bucks, something like that. Um, already done up for you and you can get them pretty close. Um, if you're bending 
and some people might want to use stainless steel but you know use use brake line use something that's made for that these uh, tubing benders are great for uh, putting the 90 degree bends and stuff in them um, I did all this yesterday and it's one of those terrible videos that I just babble too much so I'm just trying to shorten it up and give you a shorter version a lot of this is same old for a lot of people but there's a lot of videos up for up there that are helpful some by MP about their particular product some of the people that make them have posted videos on it but you know it's they just do the real straightforward instructional videos and don't really go into details as far as problems or troubleshooting they're trying to sell a product they're not going to tell you that they have problems with them um, so that's why I'm always trying to show and I, I, I show the videos on the things that I'm working at the moment I'm not going to run out here and and show somebody how to build a transmission you have to wait until I need a transmission for my car and then I'll make a video of it and I've already got plenty of those types of, of videos up um, what's another thing that's the disc brakes wheel um, I'm not going to even go into the drum brake situation we'll make this kind of a specialized video and I told you I'd show you my master cylinder uh -huh. right back there see how it's got the nice tank mounted right on there and make sure you don't have it in a bind or uh, jammed in there I have two aluminum spacers between the flange and the attachment point on the chassis to keep it away from the body and I had a great deal of difficulty um, <laughs> it looks like oh yeah there it is right in the open you could get it from the bottom <laughs> I tell you it seems like no matter which way you want to work you're only able to work with one hand I had to put that top brake line in in front of the reservoir on the bench and I kind of pre-measured it and pre-bent it and then see how this is kind of an S bend here it was just a little bit too long to be like perfect 90s but so I over bent them to bring it back in that front um, brake light switch is I'm just using it as a plug this car I don't have all the safety devices that the cars came with they had a dashboard warning device and all kinds of stuff on there so I've just got my brake light switch on the rear brakes I suppose I could put one on the front and do that in parallel this brings up another problem that I had I was told by some friends that hey I don't see your brake lights and strangers would say hey your brake lights aren't working and this car is so over braked with these disc brakes it's like having power brakes and the pedal pressure wasn't hard enough to make the brake look like come on so I go find an old one and put it on and it leaked so I went up to O'Reilly's which is close to where I live and I uh, they uh, I think it was like seven dollars or something and I I put it on and I just assumed it's brand new it's gonna work it worked but it was too much pressure so I went online when I bought that distributor I said what else do I need and I says you know that brake light switch I wonder what they got and they had two of them they had one for $4.95 and they had a German one that was $19.95 and I bought that expensive one and I swapped them out and I just stood behind the car with a, uh, a pole and put it on my brake pad and stood back here and watched my brake lights come on and it was definitely lighter uh, when I put the the new German one on um, that brings me to another point I was alone and had to bleed my brakes I asked my assistant camera girl here and she didn't want to do it she said it wasn't in her union contract <laughs> what you do I took a short pipe 
I think it's right here. This is really a, a, a saber. And you don't have to use pipe. You could use anything. I think this is the one I used right here. Just a scrap. You could use plastic or a conduit or anything that you want. And I just set it through the steering wheel onto the brake lever like this. And I took a bungee cord and I stretched it from here to the steering wheel so that it was pushing on that. Then you have to come over here and you have to pump it up. Then you have to go whichever wheel you're going to bleed. And yeah, it's a pain in the neck. It takes a lot longer because every time you, it, you'll hear it go down. And once you get the air out, then you have to come back and you have to recharge it, pull the pedal back, pull the pipe back. And it's just something I thought of. You can pressure bleed on my sand cars. I've taken an inner tube and stretched it over the, the mouth of the reservoir, made sure that it was completely full, and then took my air compressor to the, the smallest, smallest, like, you know, an eighth of a pound, just barely, and it was leaking out, and and I just, just a, just to have the slightest pressure on top of that reservoir, and that works really good. And you'll get a lot of fluid out, and it'll push the air out, and it won't add air to the system, unless you run out of fluid, <laughs> then you got to start all over again because the system gets loaded up. And it's probably a good idea to start with the furthest wheel from the master cylinder. Start with that wheel, then do that one, then do this one, and do the little short one here last, and you're done. So I hope that helps somebody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy, out.